So, you want to make your computer a nice furniture piece. Sure, many of us want a powerful computer, some for gaming, others for editing, others for machine learning, and so on. But what if you want your computer to have more functionality and serve as a decorative piece? Perhaps match your setup, or your room, or whatever aesthetic you desire. Well, here's a how-to guide on how to coordinate that. Hey guys, my name is JD, and welcome back to the channel. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. For some, aesthetics don't matter at all, and all you want is pure performance. Nothing is wrong with that. If your PC is just going to end up underneath the desk or tucked away somewhere out of sight, then there's no need to worry about aesthetics. However, if that's not the case, you may want to consider how to put together a good looking PC. For me, if I start spending $900 or more on a PC, I'm going to want it to at least look nice and appreciate the beautiful privilege I have to obtain such computational power at my hands. So here's a couple of things to keep in mind when building an aesthetic PC. Focusing on aesthetics is more likely going to cost you more money than buying hardware without any attention to design. Aesthetic PC parts usually will cost a premium, especially when you start to consider customizability. If you want a decent looking PC, it can be had without costing too much of a premium. So just keep that in mind, it might require a little bit more research. The first order of business, coming up with a color scheme. I'd recommend looking through Instagram, Reddit, Pinterest, YouTube, and so on for stylized PC builds that seem within your reach. Get an idea of what look and color scheme and what you want to go for. Now that you have some colors in mind, you should start with the case. This is going to probably be one of the more difficult decisions since there are a plethora of designs. One thing is for sure though, most cases come in either black, white, or gray. In my opinion, white or gray work better with illumination. If you add LED lighting of any kind inside your case, a black case can drown out ambient light a lot faster. White and gray cases are more reflective and don't absorb as much light and look far more illuminated. However, if you are going for deep contrast colors, then black is the way to go. For the sake of the video, I will be using the H510i from NZXT. The design aesthetic we're going with here is more of a sterile or minimal look. The case is white, which is my preference, and it looks incredibly clean. This case can sacrifice some of its thermal performance for its aesthetic design. Not all cosmetic focused cases do, but this one does, but not a lot. The second order of business, motherboard, RAM, and GPU. Motherboards more or less stick with a monochromatic theme consisting of a mixture of grays, blacks, and LEDs sprinkled throughout. The most cosmetic of motherboards usually have shielding over the rear I.O., M.2 slots, and more, but often cost more. Most of these motherboards have their own basic RGB software. A thing to keep in mind when looking for cosmetic value from a motherboard besides its appearance is its RGB headers. Try and find out if the motherboard has a 5 volt RGB header and a 12 volt RGB header. The 5 volt header is used for addressable RGBs, allowing for further lighting possibilities and more animations, whereas the 12 volt header is for basic RGB LED control. If the RGB capability you're looking for is a singular static color, you'll be fine with just a 12 volt header. In this video, I'm using NZXT Z390 N7 motherboard, which is complemented with a similar sterile design as the case. So the design language between the case and the motherboard will be the same, not to mention the case and motherboard have support for NZXT's CAM software, which control RGB LEDs and fan curves. For choosing the type of RAM you want, there are plenty of decent RGB options in my opinion. The reason I vouch for RGB so much is the customizability. Choose a single color, multiple colors, animations, or leave the LEDs off completely. For this build, I'll be using G-Skills Trident Z Memory, which is a standard for RGB RAM modules and a go-to for a lot of people. However, Corsair's White Vengeance Pro RAM would suit better with the white aesthetic build, but the flip side to that is that there would be little to no contrast to the rest of the build. For GPUs, choosing this for aesthetic purposes is a bit more tricky in my opinion. Most modern GPUs have RGB lighting or have a monochromatic theme. If you try to find an all-white GPU like the Galax brand of GPUs, you can often find them on an off-white compared to most components and I'll just look off. For me, I'm using EVGA's GTX 1080 Ti, which is a fine card for the sake of the video. It is mostly color neutral and will fit most themes. However, if you do want to take it a step further, look at V1 Tech and get a custom backplate with or without RGB lighting to add an extra layer of customization. 
customization and cosmetic flair. Another component that can be often overlooked is the M.2 based SSDs. Some boards come with M.2 heat shields which fit in with the rest of the board in terms of appearance but if you want something a bit more you can look at the Sura Genesis which is fantastic of an NVMe SSD with RGB LEDs built into it. Not to mention a seven year warranty to carry along with it. I used this in my dual system PC build a little bit earlier and loved it. The third order of business, cooling appearance. Fans and CPU cooling is another aesthetic that can dominate your PC. If you decide to go with air cooling for your CPU, the cooler could be taking up a large amount of space and block the appearance of your RAM and parts of your motherboard. Now this can be an aesthetic choice if you choose it to be. For me, I'd choose water cooling for aesthetic purposes, but that's just me. Here I'm using the Corsair H115i, which again is RGB, but the pump looks great in my opinion and operates pretty quietly. It fits the overall theme well. If I was going for the same theme, but for an air cooler, I'd look towards Noctua's lineup of Chromax coolers or Deepcool's new Assassin 3 cooler, which is supposed to directly compete with the NHD 15 and the Alight. There are a ton of fan options on the market and makes it really difficult to choose. But for this video, I'm staying within the same NZXT cam environment with the AER RGB fans. These are shaped well and perform well. Other decent RGB options include the Corsair LL fans and the Thermaltake Trio fans. For non-RGB variants, look to the Be Quiet Silent Wings 3 fans and Noctua's Chromax fans if you want to keep an aesthetic design without sacrificing any sort of thermal or noise performance. Essentially, I want to create two paths here, one for LED or RGB lighting and one without. Either way, I would recommend trying to keep the fans consistent throughout the build. However, sometimes that can be difficult. The last order of business, cables and cable management. There are sites that allow you to fully customize sleeve cables, which will certainly cost more. Or a more budget friendly option would be to find sleeve cables on Amazon in different color schemes. These pre-made sleeve cables are extensions, so keep that in mind when considering cable management. There's a good enough of variety for color schemes to match your build. Lastly, let's look at cable management. When you choose a case, try to find one with rubber grommets and a decent amount of room in the rear of the case. Try your best to organize and hide your cables. There's a few tutorials on YouTube already on how to organize cables effectively, so make sure to refer to those. For sleeve cables, you can find cable combs of specific color to match your color coordination even better. For the most part, they're pretty cheap unless you're buying aluminum ones. There's a couple things to keep in mind when coordinating your PC aesthetics. Sometimes the more aesthetic version is going to cost more. Cosmetics can often sacrifice functionality, more specifically PC cases do this often. Just make sure the thermal sacrifice isn't too much. RGB functionality is great for customization. However, it can get confusing between addressable RGBs and non-addressable RGBs, which motherboard software control to go with or which brand of software you want to use like Corsair IQ, NZXT Cam, and so on. If you're on a budget, there are certainly budget cosmetic options at the sacrifice of customizability. This guide can't cover everything in depth. That video would be way too long. For a high level guide, hopefully this can help you on your PC building adventure. If you like what you saw here and want to see more, consider checking out the rest of the channel, subscribing for more. Also, all the products featured in the video will be listed in the description below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.